welcome back to my channel on affordable air gunning and today's tutorial is not to explain why we need a regulator I think most of us know the reason why but a lot of people ask the question how does the regulator work I've spent quite a bit of time it's a bit of a lengthy video about 12 minutes Sean can, yeah. I, can I finish well oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, thank you so uh, it's a 12 minute tutorial explaining in detail with graphics and flow diagrams to explain how does the regulator work in INSAF. There are many of you out there, I've seen many questions asked exactly how does the regulator work inside. Follow my 12 minute video, I think it's reasonably well explained. Um, for those that are technically minded, it might be a bit slow, but go through it, see what it is. And hopefully by the end of that video, you will have a thorough understanding of what happens inside the rifle and what the, exactly what the regulator does inside. Enjoy the video. Okay, they come in all different shapes and sizes. However, principle of operation remains virtually identical. Where does this regulator go? All our rifles have a reservoir or cylinder. And this aftermarket regulator needs to get inside this reservoir. So you get your aftermarket regulator. This is one of Robert Lane's. It has to get inside the tank. How does that happen? Remove the valve assembly and insert the regulator into your reservoir. Remember, this is not a tutorial on how to do it. It's a tutorial on explaining how does this regulator work. Once installed, reservoir back. You now have a regulator over here inside your PCP. Let's look at the regulator and how it works. We've got a photo of a regulator, a cross-section cutout of a regulator. Again, these are some of Robert Lane's. And then I've made a schematic of a regulator. And I'll be using this schematic to explain. Let's start off with the components. On the regulator housing, we have a breathe hole. We have an air intake, then we have two O-rings. This seals the regulator housing inside the cylinder, preventing air to slip past. Inside we have a piston, and very important to keep in mind that this piston stem is hollow on the inside. Now we have O-rings that fit on the piston head to seal the chamber. It's just a circlip in there just holding the piston in place, preventing it from falling out. And on the stem of the piston, also a pair of O-rings or an O-ring over there. Then a high rate compression spring. And the purpose of this spring is to put a force in this direction to hold the piston head forward. We have a pressure adjustment screw, which we'll come to a bit later and explain how that works. Okay, let us just orientate again. Remember, the regulator went into the cylinder. Here's the schematic of what that looked like on the schematic once the regulator is inside. And now the valve assembly has to be fitted. Again, valve assembly is returned. And this is what the regulator now looks like on the inside of your cylinder or reservoir. So what difference is this regulator going to do? Let's have a look. We start filling our reservoir with air. Air pressure increases inside the reservoir. It now wants to continue flowing to the valve assembly. And the only way it can do that is to enter into the air intake of the regulator housing. The air enters. Now, keep in mind that the piston stem is hollow. Air flows through the piston stem and enters into the valve assembly. At this stage, as it enters the valve assembly, you can see the pressure on the valve assembly and the reservoir is still exactly the same. Pressure is uniform throughout. And let's focus for now on the valve assembly. As the pressure now continues to increase while you're refilling, obviously the pressure inside the valve assembly also increases. Let's quickly recap pressure. Pounds per square inch. It's nothing other than the weight or the force of the air that it exerts on an object. In this case, Let's look at the piston head, the force that the air pressure exerts on the piston head. As you continue to refill, at some stage, the air pressure inside the valve assembly will be greater than that of the spring tension. 
And once you've reached this point where you've now refilled the pressure to higher than that of the spring tension, the piston will start to move. As the piston starts moving towards the right, we have to now focus again on the air intake side, more specifically where the knife edge of the piston stem and the adjustment screw is located. As the piston moves back, this gap between the piston and the adjustment screw obviously becomes smaller and smaller. That's the gap I'm referring to. Before I continue my explanation, let's have a look at a photo of a regulator piston. If you look at this photo here, starting from the left, we have the piston head with its O-ring, the spring guide, the piston stem, and more specifically, what we're focusing on now is the knife edge. Look at this knife edge. Here's a close-up photo of the knife edge of a piston. Very small surface area, very sharp. And the purpose of this knife edge is to seal itself onto the adjustment screw. What does the adjustment screw look like? If you look at this photo now, you can see an adjustment screw and again with a soft nylon insert inside which is what the knife edge seals itself on. Now that you know what these two components look like, let's get back to the schematic. And as the pressure increases, while you're now filling your reservoir, at some stage, the force on the piston head will be sufficient to push this piston's knife edge firmly enough onto this little nylon insert that the air can no longer enter into the piston stem. In other words, it's blocked itself. When this happens, let's now go back to the valve assembly. And the valve assembly will now be sealed regardless of the pressure increase inside the reservoir. Okay, it just remains constant. It's sealed off and no matter how much air you put in, you can guard this 200, 250 or 300 bar, whatever your cylinder is rated for, it does not matter. The pressure in the valve assembly remains to the preset value. It cannot enter, it's sealed shut. So this until you pull the trigger. And as the hammer hits the release valve, the pressure will obviously immediately start to drop inside the valve assembly. And when the pressure drops in the valve assembly, immediately the spring tension will now again be greater than the force of the pressure in the valve assembly. And obviously it will then start to push the piston back. As this happens, the uh, knife edge will no longer seat against the adjustment screw and the high pressure in the air reservoir will immediately again start to flow down the piston stem and into the valve assembly, repressurizing the assembly. And keep in mind this happens extremely fast and it will keep repeating itself as long as the pressure in the reservoir is greater than in the valve assembly. At some point, let's assume that the pressure was adjusted to 140 bar in this valve assembly. As soon as you take that final shot, that will now cause the overall pressure in the reservoir to drop below this preset 140 bar. The force acting on the piston head can no longer be sufficient to seal this piston on the adjustment screw. And it is at this point where it will be considered that your regulator is now permanently open. With the regular correction, with the regulator being permanently open, obviously the pressure on the reservoir and valve assembly side will be equal to each other and it's now time to refill our reservoir. Remember that once your regulator is permanently open, it doesn't mean the rifle is not going to shoot anymore. It just means that from this point onwards, after every single shot of the shot now, the overall pressure drops and subsequently your velocity starts to rapidly decrease, decrease, decrease shot after shot. And Obviously, with a change in velocity, there will be a change in impact point, making your rifle now less, less accurate, or the point of impact will continue to shift as the pressure continues to drop inside the uh, reservoir. So, what was the advantage of having this regulator fitted compared to a non-regulated rifle? If I use my crawl, the uh, bullpup, I was starting off with a 200 bar a reservoir, I was starting off at about 9, 39, 40 foot per second uh, on 18 grain JSBs. And by the time I've got shot number 25, the velocity was down to about 800, 820. So I've lost more than 100 foot per second in two magazines. And that 
percentage-wise 10 to 15 percent drop in velocity. So there's no way that I could for the first 20-25 shots have a constant point of impact. Short distance yes, but when you start going 50, 60, 70 yards there was definitely a, a marked difference in the point of impact. With the regulator, the first 20 shots at least, I might get slightly less power, but it's a constant, constant, constant velocity, uh, ensuring that my point of impact is the same. And I would much rather have a 30 foot pound PCP putting bullet after bullet in the same hole than having a 35 foot pound PCP, but it is a constant drop in uh, point of impact for the first 20 rounds. And that's the biggest advantage that we get from the regulator, the constant velocity that would of course equate to a very accurate PCP. Okay, you've watched up to now and the question now, how do we adjust the regulator? Again, on the more upmarket models, we have our adjuster, power adjuster here, uh, you can actually adjust the regulator and the hammer. There's a lot that you can adjust on the FX. On an aftermarket regulator, the problem is the adjustment still needs to be done on the regulator on the inside. Uh, it's a bit of a timeless process, but if you want to get your rifle to be perfectly tuned, uh, it does take a bit of time. However, quite satisfying once you've done the tuning third or second time out at the range, and you get that 50, 60, 70 yard grouping and it really pulls the, 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 your, your grouping in. So um, have a look at this next uh, two, three minutes of the video and ex it explains exactly how the regulator is adjusted and uh, uh, what happens inside the regulator when you turn the adjustment screw. So then just to recap again, let's rewind a bit. As was stated earlier, once our air pressure inside the valve assembly is great enough that the force is on the piston head is stronger than the tension in the spring. That is when the piston starts to move, as mentioned there. Now, once the piston moves and seals itself, if you could change the force required to move the piston, or till it seals itself, you can adjust the pressure inside the valve assembly. And very simple, look at these schematics on top here. Uh, from Robert Lane by merely turning the adjustment screw further away from the knife edge of the piston would mean a greater force would be required to push the piston until it seals itself and you can see uh, you're talking a millimeters of movement uh, the lane regulators are calibrated it's got little notches on it and it's about a five bar for the for this regulator I've purchased the red dot every indent I turn this in or out on the markings on the regulator housing equates to about a five bar adjustment. So this is how you adjust the regulator. The only negative part about this is you have to take your rifle apart, do the adjustments, reassemble your rifle, then go out to the range again and, uh, and do your trials again. Two, three, four, Shouldn't be more than five times that you need to go out. It does sound like uh, a lot of effort. However, it's fun, keeps you busy, and ultimately you will have exactly what you want in your rifle. And the shooting will become a lot more enjoyable because you now have a very, very, very accurate rifle compared to what you previously had. And I think looking at these results, I think uh, they speak for themselves. If this was from a concrete table, I'm sure I could have reduced another probably three, four millimeters from that grouping. The table was really rickety, but there's no ways I could have previously done this. 50 meter grouping, five shot grouping, another five shot grouping uh, with 18 grain JSBs. Uh, and uh, and it's really fantastic. So we know the advantage of a regulator. I hope that my tutorial was insightful. You now also know how it works, but uh, definitely the way to go. If you don't have a regulator in, you don't have money for an expensive rifle that's fitted with it, get yourself one of these aftermarket ones. Again, I promote the uh, lane regulators, not because I've ever met the guy or anything, but I think it's a top quality product that is affordable and uh, complements the uh, vision I have for my channel, which is affordable air gunning. Enjoy and happy hunting.